Hey everybody, morning. Morning, Larry, Wade, Philip, Dan, Rex, Rosalind, Kenneth, Sergio, Eric, Nina, Anderson, Robert, Alan, Nikki, Michael, Don, Donald, excuse me, Gary, Carlene, Francois, John, T General Rush, good morning. Mark, Joseph, David, Rongamer, JB, Thrifty, Nifty, Ted, Terrence, Jen, Rick, Cliff, good morning, everybody. If you want to be a subscriber, <laughs> click the link over here. That allows you to chat just like everybody else saying, hey, and good morning, and welcome to the live stream. So check it out right over here. Oh, oh. Apparently, apparently we're, we're leveraged, leveraged on the uh, retail sales here. Retail sales numbers is out this morning, and right here, coming in a little spicy to the good, maybe. I hard to Hard to get a grasp on retail sales when they just kind of bounce right around near zero, uh, not really trending. You know, we had some chaos back here in COVID and we look at it prior. It's, it's a very non-trending number, right? There, it, I mean, it just kind of, I almost see like the yearly cycle in here every time. And we look back to prior chaos. We got several consecutive reports of negative right back there. We keep going back. We got a little chaos right there. In 2001, and there's not a lot to, it doesn't seem like there's a lot to glean out of the retail sales numbers month over month. And they don't really give us a year over year on here. And we got the core retail sales hitting 1.1. But again, this is just a, so you see, there's going to be a bunch of pundits talking about retail sales numbers, blah, 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 blah. But what is, what does that really mean? Not much at all. I mean, we have retail coming in strong. What is that likely to mean? It means rate raises. Strong economy, rate raises. Weak economy, rate cuts. I don't care what they say. Like, oh, we got inflation back under control. Bull crap. Simple as strong economy, rate raises. Weak economy, rate cuts. That's simple. That's simple. And uh, the rest of the week... As we look down through here, it's not a lot, not a lot happening the rest of the week, economic news wise. This is the economic news calendar. I pull up off forexfactory.com, click on the calendar button right up here at the top, free for all, no login required. If you wanted to look at it and you want to see the numbers and it has neat little charts and you can see, but I mean, I'm sure there's going to be pundits spinning this all week long, but you know, we don't have anything till unemployment claims and you know, as we know, that's kind of a manufactured number anyway. So nothing really all week. So what does that leave us with? It leaves us with earnings, 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 earnings. And um, as we pop up, I'm going to open all trading and grab the chart that shows us the earnings for this week. Courtesy of earningswhisper.com. Right here. We can see banks. Yeah, you know, the money's already pretty much if if money was rotating into banks, it's already done that. Now, likely to see money rotating out of banks and into big tech. We have a the first notable big tech right here coming up on Thursday, TSMC and Netflix hitting on Thursday. This will lead into some other stuff hitting. Now, there are banks all week, yes, but we typically see the money flow in to financials ahead of earnings, not during earnings ahead of earnings. So that, that cycle has already happened. If that's something new you've never heard of before, go check it out. Um, it really shows up on something leveraged like FAS. You know, one of the leveraged, oh, excuse me, one of the leveraged financial products. And, well, we could see a little bit of chaos. We were seeing a little chaos on Friday, but uh, maybe that was all because of the pending... I mean, I, I had several members that thought Thought everything was going to kick off for World War III this weekend. Raise your hand if you think that might have happened. Eh, I wasn't so sure. And looked like a giant drone and missile strike pretty much put down. Uh, looked like we were out there refueling everybody. And yeah, nothing burger in the end. And um, they're, they're really beating the drum really strongly on how there shouldn't be any retaliation. Uh, that makes me... 
makes me think that the ret retaliation is going to be quiet after this all dies down a little bit. We're going we're gonna to put the hurting on them later on. But kind of one of those things, you know, <laughs> as, as one of my members said, it, it probably won't make the news when they retaliate. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so earnings are going to be the big show for the next couple weeks, probably, as we get through the end of the month anyway. And might I remind you, this was two Fridays back. This was Friday last week, right here. And we're going to be rolling on through. So we're going to get a whole bunch of earnings reporting as we roll through this. You know, as you can see, April 16th, that's the, that'll be tomorrow right there. So we're, we're coming on through the curve. As we get on down to the end of the month, we'll have most of the market cap of the S&P out of the blackout window. All right, what does that mean? It means right now they're in the voluntary blackout window where they can't really do buybacks. They, and people in the know, which would be your CEOs and your CFOs and um, anybody, anybody working in those departments that would have knowledge of how the company is doing and how the sales numbers are and stuff like that, they can't make trades, can't do buys, can't do sales. They're in a blackout period. That's what that means. You can't, you know, insiders and the company itself can't do anything. It's a voluntary period. The SEC frowns upon insider trading, so they try to protect everybody with a voluntary blackout window. And generally, it's about three weeks before earnings. Now, once earnings happen, free for all. Go do whatever you want. So right there, we were we were here, and I guess we're here today. So we're going to be rolling through S&P 500 companies. And so by the end of the month, by the beginning of May, we'll have most of this out of the way. And of course, it's a cycle that never seems to end. We roll into, roll into it, roll right back out of it, and we'll start the next cycle in July. So there we go. There we go. All right. I mean, we may we may see some volatility. We may not. We'll see what happens. We've got Goldman Sachs and Charles Schwab this morning, and let's get to where we can talk about them. So. Before I talk about any trades, all trading involves a substantial risk of loss. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. That means I may never get something right again. Just because I make epic predictions, they tend to, I tend to get lucky. Doesn't mean I'll ever do it again. This presentation intended to be informational, educational, fun, and entertaining. Not a recommendation to be buying or selling anything. No stocks, no options, no bonds, no Forex, no futures, no cryptos, no treasuries. Don't long them, don't short them, don't trade them. Don't buy stuff from gurus. Don't, don't gurus. Don't buy stuff from me if you don't trust me. But if you do and you want to go deeper, the link is in the description down below. You just click the more button. If you do trust me, you do think I've got something, a little something magic out there. It's it's my bag of uh, unicorn dust right here. Keep it on my desk. So if you desire personal financial advice, though, that's not what I do. I don't do that at all. You got to go consult a financial advisor, but make sure you trust them because let's be honest. Most people out there are just trying to take some of your money and make it into some of their money. And some people are trying to take a lot of your money and make it into their money. Some people are just trying to get a little bit. You know, my kids don't eat on, you know, thanks and hopes and stuff like that. So I do have to make some of your money my money if uh, you choose to go deeper with me. All right. Choose to support me and my family and keep me in business here. Moving on. S&P 500. Boy, I have to tell you, a lot of people, a lot of people were sweating that Israel thing. A lot of people were sweating that. And turns out we're up 43 points. Look at that. Really strong, my friend. Look at where we look at this. I think this is magic. I had a feeling we weren't going any deeper. You know why? Look at where we closed on Friday. We actually bounced into the close right there. The 6 p.m. close. Or I guess right. Five four five. 5 p.m. close right there. That little bitty red guy right there was the 5 p.m. close. 6 p.m. open on Sunday and rally up to the 30 minute roadmap line. Look at that. I mean, you may think this is all magic right there. 5150. Boom. Bounced off it. We talked about 5150 a lot for a long time this year. For a long time last year. It's a key level right there. 5150. We are set to push higher again. 
Dun, 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 So we have to look at the whole big correction. Look at this. Look at how overlapping this was. For those of you that know what I pay attention to, look at this. Every low, every high, I've overlapped every low. Oh my gosh, it was so overlapping and corrective. That's not the way we start a new trend. All right. This is likely to go higher once we break out above these highs. Kind of trend lines, the, the least reliable, but that's our first indication we're going higher. A break right above this trend line, right up here around 5230-ish. Yeah, that's like another 20 points higher. But we could get a big up. I mean, it could be pretty sizable too. So we're talking about a fib line from this ultimate high right back here, March 31st, all the way down to this low right here on Friday. This sets us up. Let's just remove the one from Friday because we hit the 1272 and bounced solidly. So we've got the 618 right here, 5266. This is our level right here. I'm actually going to put an alert because I want to know because that makes it about 70% likely. We're going right up here. I've got an alert at a new high. And 53.85 on the futures, not on the cash index. Don't get it confused. This is our target right here. Once we get above this level right here, 70% likely. And we were already kind of like we were going to do it anyway. Right there. Now, how long? Well, this correction took two weeks. So this could take... Two weeks it could take six weeks could take three times longer in general you know, it can do whatever it wants to do it doesn't have to go do that but you know this could this could take us on out here like this well into may what are we gonna do One, do, 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 do. and could we go higher absolutely we could go higher so that's the path we're on right now gotta prove it we're gonna break it 30 minute then we got to prove it. We're going to break it on the one hour. There's a little bit higher, closer to the trend line. Then we got to do it on the four hour, which we're just bouncing off the four hour. So we could go on a nice big fat run. I mean, look, last time we bounced off the four hour roadmap line was back here in January. Kind of did a double bounce. This led to a heck of a run. I mean, look. That right there, all the way up. Could we do a double bounce? We absolutely could. But we could do this again. What would that result in? Holy moly, right up near 6,000. And well out to July. That could be interesting. Fits with my narrative I was talking about, Goose, out in the summer. Anyway. All right. There you go. So we got to watch the bounce. We're already testing the roadmap line on the 30 minute. We get through it. There we go. And the market's open. I heard the bell in the other room. In queue, already pushing through. This one has maintained a relatively bullish, even on that flush out Friday. Look at that. Did not even, like this is why I wasn't overly bearish. This is already starting to shape up as a bullish pattern, a very extremely bullish. And we may, in fact, rally all the way back up here around almost near 20,000. The top of that channel. This is the channel we were kind of in all year so far. Kind of resize it here. See, we were riding in this channel, riding, well, probably started back before that even. Right, all the way back here. And riding in this channel. I broke into it back here. Went riding, 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 riding. Oh, it took a little diversion out. That may propel us to pop up out of the top. That'd be pretty wild before we, we find some ultimate volatility and find an ultimate top. Now, I do believe we're probably going to experience the ultimate top this year. Now, the rest of the year may be in a correction where we go down and then rally back up, make a lower high before we ultimately crush this baby so that's kind of what i've gotten in mind as a working plan on the bigger picture as far as russell goes this one 
kind of similar to in cube, but indicating that the top may be done. I'm not convinced we're going back up. We've got the major resistance right up here, 2100. If we hold that and turn down again, that's the indication the market's up to something more sinister. Got something more sinister in plan as far as the sentiment of everybody out there. Gold and oil have been looking pretty sweet. Oil, <laughs> some people shorten this weekend, some people long in this weekend, and it turns out it's a nothing burger. No big war in the Middle East broke out, so bleh, just nothing. Friday, we got a big doji, which kind of was your tell already. And then today, just sideways. Consolidation, this is one of the three paths we usually get before. Uh, I do expect a retest of this breakout level kind of before we, which could be all the way down to here, back to that line. Retest that before we push higher. Let's see what Logi, Logi's kicking an alert. Let's see what that has. Oh, down to the roadmap line, right there. So we've got that high, we've got this low. If we can bounce here, break back above 9150, 101 on the upside. Back to what I was talking about. And let's see, GC, the gold. That's possibly that that blast off on Friday. To me, that was kind of a blow off. We may experience a deeper correction. I'm actually looking for GLD to probably come back to. I usually trade gold with GLD. And at this point, looking for GLD to come back to this 210 area, probably. If we can hold the 210 area. That sets us up to go visit some much higher levels. Like we're talking about possibly upwards of 250 to 270 by the end of the year, maybe. So I'm probably gonna get back in. I did liquidate my $300 calls on Friday. They were really juicy. And we watched the, watched the premium on, the, on those evaporate on that candle Friday. And I, I think we're in for some more downside, possibly down to 210. Um, gold itself, probably going to see a retrace back down a little bit. Probably get a, at least a 38.2. And that's not, that's not the one I need. Let's do this off here and here. Yeah, somewhere in this 38.2 to 50% retrace area. Right there, that's perfect. Right where I got the target. So 2300 down to possibly 2230. That's where I expect us to bounce from. Maybe as low as 2257. I think I said 23, 2230. I mean 2290, excuse me, 2290. Possibly as low as 2260. Get my numbers right. So there we go. That'd be what I expect. Find support here. It could take us a couple weeks. I could do another one of these where, where it was like, you know, we chugged around down here and it was just like, oh, some of you were doubting JT was right on this one. And then blast off, baby. So we may do another churn and churn and burn here. Burn up some theta, burn up some uh, longs before we find that support and go again. Bitcoin, what a what a wild ride over the weekend. We gotta we gotta go look to the spot market. What a wild ride. We did a dip and we did a pop. And I'm gonna use the all time history right here. There we go. They're coming in, not actually a lower low. It was it was close. It was really really close. Not actually a lower low. We're still maintaining the 70% likely to go to 77,000. Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? Now, notably, our friend Ethereum here. Our friend Ethereum. We didn't get the SEC news yet, but look where we went and visited. Dun, 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 dun. Right there. We touched that daily roadmap line. 
and found support. Now, I'm not getting back along yet, but this is an indication that the correction may have been complete. We did a very proportional echoey type move where this first move down and this last move down were the same size. What does that leave us? It leaves us with this right here. We break back above this 3,500 area, 45% likely, I mean 45, 70% likely to go visit the 4,500 area. Get in mind. I am, my brain's going faster than my words, or words are going faster than my brain. Something's going faster than something. Anyway, right there. Sets that move up right there. I did liquidate. I'm just kind of sitting on my hands right now. I need the cash more than I need the, the profits. So there we go. We did not visit it on the futures because futures were closed while all the excitement happened. So you had to go to the spot market to, to see all the excitement this weekend. And Ethereum reacted, oh gosh, altcoins reacted very harshly compared to Bitcoin. Bitcoin held up. Bitcoin is the highest percentage of market cap it's been in like three years right now. If we go look at the coin market cap. Come look at this. You know, Bitcoin was actually up right at 55% on yesterday. Peeling back just a little bit today, 53.9. Ethereum at 16. You add those together. And we're looking at 70% of the market right there between those two. 70% of the entire crypto. And look at how look how similar all these charts look. Look at that. Oh, very, 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 very similar. A few outliers like that one right there. Very interesting to me how all of the crypto market basically follows the top two. So alrighty. Oh, that's just that was just exchanges. I wasn't even on the cryptos. Duh. Here's the, there's the cryptos. There you go. All, all very, 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 very similar. There you go. That was volume and exchanges. All very, 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 very similar. So it shows you they're all tied together. Go to exchanges. Yeah, there you go. Volume graph. So the volume at almost every exchange. You see some of the dead exchanges. So it's funny, funny to me how crypto charts all follow the same. You've got some that are flat, like stable coins, USDC, Tether, just flat. And guess what this week is? Dun 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 dun. Less than oh, we're down to six hundred and sixty blocks to go. Four days left, 11 hours. The main event, the having countdown. Dun, dun, dun. And we, are, we were running a little ahead yesterday. Still running just a little ahead, 12 blocks ahead. A lot of transactions. Golly, look how many transactions are hanging out here. 155,000. Plus 3,000, plus 3,000, plus 3,000, plus 3,000, plus 3,000, plus 3,000, plus 3, almost 4,000. That's a lot of transactions trying to get through. Right here, I had a having. And they're like, people are paying a lot too. Like this. Hmm. And we were seeing, we were seeing some down here at 12 Satoshis per virtual byte. I mean, we were seeing that down to seven before about two weeks back. And now we're we're seeing 177, which right now at the current price of Bitcoin, that's running 16 bucks per virtual byte in the block. It's pretty wild. High transaction fees right now. If you're trying to transact on Bitcoin. Let's look at the last block. And the subsidy plus the fees. Wow. 
Subsidy was 6.25 Bitcoins, and with the fees, it bumped it up to 8.3 to mine that block. Huh, look at all those transactions. That's pretty wild. Pretty wild to me. So the, the subsidy is going to drop. You know, Right now, it's subsidized mining. That's what the, the having payout, the block reward is a subsidy for you know to get people to participate in mining. And the subsidy at the countdown here, and when we get to block number 840,000, the subsidy drops from 6.25 Bitcoins per block down to 3.125. That's the big deal. Like that, I mean, as we get to the end of this cycle. And then now the whole big thing at this point is that when we look at BTC, USD, full-time history, all-time history, This was the last one. It's happened about every four years. This was the last one right in front of COVID. We got a large upside. And it sat sideways for almost six months before we really started breaking higher. All right. Now, what I've been talking about, are we running ahead? Like, was this part back here about six months ago, was that the part where we were kind of, we were in the, the lull, and now this is the acceleration we're actually running six months ahead. So we could just see a little hiccup on having and then continue the rally toward the target zone. So that's uh, something to think about. You know, people say this time's different. Maybe we're on an accelerated pathway this time instead of it being drug out as long as it has in the past. You know, Historically, it's almost always been about six months before it really gets rocking and rolling. See that prior high back here? Took us right here from this having up about, you know, right around 200, 240-ish days, you know, a little over six months. One before that, same kind of situation. There was a prior high, took us roughly, I don't have that having in the right spot, I don't believe. I think it was back here, just a little bit. Yeah, roughly six months. I think it happened right there, actually. Right where that jig jog was. I don't have my dates memorized all the way back then. It's in the past, baby. Anyway, there you go. We're about to happen. It's about to happen. It's happening, sweetheart. Now, a lot of people are excited about this Ethereum. So Ethereum has spot ETFs potentially happening in May, next month. And if the SEC classifies Ethereum as a security instead of a commodity, those current spot ETF applications are going to have to be revised and revised quickly. So I don't know if the SEC is going to do it or not. I was speculating that may cause it to dump, and it may still cause it to dump if they do. Highly cautious. So I'm just sitting on the sideline right now for Ethereum. DXY. Why am I spending so much time talking about Bitcoin? Because the event we've been waiting for for four years is happening. And here's the dollar. We have set up 70% likely at this point. It's push higher. That we're going up here to this 108, 109 area. All the way up here, where I've said we're probably going, what is it now? Seven months, eight months, nine months since August last year. Probably finally going there. Sometimes these things take a while to work themselves out. The price was clear where it was probably going. The time frame, not so clear. And we could get another dip that extends this on out to the summer of this year. So that's what we've got at this point on the dollar. I don't know the time frame. If you wanted to trade something like this, like UUP is probably going to rally on up. And it had a large dividend that makes it all skewed up. So you'd have to probably use the adjusted to get the semblance of something that looked somewhat like what it should, but it doesn't at all. So this is difficult right here. You'd have to, you'd have to get along with the 
by what and then watch this chart because UUP chart looks nothing like the cash index here. All right, what's actually moving today? ASML was popping. Now, well, we zoom in a bit and it is up 21, so that is popping, but just churning in this zone right here. And this, the way it looked up, oh, excuse me, this popped up really high. Consolidate right here. Looks a lot like this, right? I'll be very cautious that we don't just drop back out. I show this off often to keep reminding you what this looks like. Don't get complacency. We get euphoria. Everybody's a genius. We're all going to be rich. Then we get this. We just need to cool off a little bit for the next rally. And then next thing you know, you're holding on way too long. It's not about being wrong that costs you the money. It's staying wrong. Don't stay wrong. All right. If you're thinking you might be wrong, just get out and wait for it to set up again. Because if you stay wrong, you're going to ride it all the way back down and you're going to be depressed about it. And then you're going to have to wait for it to get all the way back up here again before you can get out for just break even. Or you're going to book a loss and you're going to have anger and, you know, like panic. Everybody's selling. I need to get out. You know, capitulation. I'm getting out 100% of the markets. I can't afford to lose more. I mean, think about it. We've all heard this. We've heard people say this. If you haven't been a trader long enough, just hang around. You'll hear people say this stuff. Wire, nice pop right there. Let's see what we got. Oh, the fib line. Yeah, it's just, that's way past anything I'd be messing with. That's probably going to retrace at some point. We've exceeded all the targets. And it could be heading up to 344, possibly. Possibly. AVGO. That one's churning right near the top. Finding resistance. Dun, 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 dun. Just delete some of these things off here. I think we're probably heading down to the roadmap line sooner or later. Could be later, could be sooner. We're sitting right at this consolidation. Doesn't take much to break it down. And I mean, just like Ethereum, that echo of that retrace would not I mean, not unexpected and would take us right down to that target zone. So definitely be careful chasing AVGO. GS, popping. JPM was dropping on Friday. GS, popping. Does have resistance there, but the next upside, on up here. On up here. Let's see, let me remove the correct. There we go. And do, 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 do. Try to get this on the right fib line, fib, the right correction. There we go. That's where that target comes from. Well, um, cannot remove these, I swear. There we go, there we go. At some point, it probably needs another retrace. That was a pretty good one right there. It's like a three move up. Choppy crap up. It's hard to hard to predict that one right there for me. That move, that move, that move. We could find resistance all the way up here. Funny enough, this could still be a move up right in there and still be corrective. So 40, 432 to 440. We find resistance there and turn down. You may see a move back down below this point right here. All right. ESLT. It was making the poppers list eh, up eight, but that looks pretty gnarly. Try to break through, 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 try to break through. That's a lot of resistance right there. This looks like it may do another move down. Could be as violent as that, right off that high. I'll be very, very cautious right now. 
showing a lot of resistance right in that zone between the 618 and the 786. A lot of resistance, a lot of trouble getting through. I mean, it's been working on that for almost a year. Cannot get through that zone for a year, which means it may need more downside. More flushing out. LMT, same deal. Look, look we're, we just keep hitting our head right in there. Lower highs each time. Just needs a flush out. Meta keeps grinding up toward the target. There's your four paths right there. Path number one. Once we get to the 1272, path number one to the 1618. Path number two. Path number three. And path number four is that we don't hold it and we break on down. This was off the little correction back here and looking at the bigger picture. And then when we get to here, we'll probably do the same four paths for a possible 945 up there. Crazy talk. Netflix, Netflix, Netflix. So this one has resistance at the prior all-time high, uh, double top situation. Resistance there, support down here. Anything in between is a coin flip for me right now. We did a big retrace here. I got long, high probability, got out at 550. And just been watching. Just been watching it churn. Like it's been a very churny, choppy mess, and we haven't reached the prior high yet. FNGU, that's a leveraged ETN. Be careful on leverage. That thing's probably going to break at some point and come down in a blaze of glory. Yeah, they have 3x up and they have 3x down. So caution on that one. MTB, just churning, 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 burning. Looks like they beat on the top, missed on the bottom, and get a little positive action, but not go anywhere. Not breaking out, not dropping, nothing. CNC. Little pop, but that doesn't look that doesn't look super bullish either. Not convinced. One bit. Need to move this over to that high. Pull this down. If we can get above this 7850 area, maybe up to 8470, maybe 89. DXYZ just keeps making the list. Chaos, man. Five dollars up. That really looks like it wants to drop out. Sap. Looks like it wants to come down. Rent might be reversing his fortune, but we've seen this play out before. Hung out over the red map line and then drifted back down to a lower low. This was on a reverse split. Reverse splits aren't bullish. That how low does she go before she finds actual support? I don't know. Lost a lot of money. Didn't have a ton of revenue either. PLL. Piedmont Lithium looks pretty crap. Popping a little bit, but where's the bottom? Is that the bottom? It's the bottom on down here. I don't know. That's not tradable to me. We may, in fact, come down and revisit this resting spot. Where we were just hanging out back here during COVID. SMPO, Snap One Holdings. Man, what a gnarly chart. Nothing, no thank you. RNAC. That looks like a chaotic drop with a reverse split. One for 30. Uh, therapeutics, biotech, probably doing that. It may take a diversion up before it keeps on coming down, though. B, L, K, B, Black Bod. Still has the gap fill. I bit my cheek. Anyway, need to get up, up above 84 to signal. Signal, we're going to 95. Otherwise, we may just find resistance and go on down. USD, ultra pro. The pro shares ultra semiconductors looks like it wants to come back to the roadmap line at some point and it may just drift sideways until the point where we reach 
the roadmap line over here somewhere like this. Somewhere out there, SCCO. Yeah, that's just being ridiculous right there. Next target's up probably around 135. On the tear, MAT consolidating. Could go again. I don't know. It can definitely roll down back to the roadmap line. FAS well on its way back to the roadmap line. Would not surprise me one bit. This is 3x leverage though, and 3x leverage <laughs> leverage period doesn't always follow the pattern. So I do caution there. TSM. Yeah, this makes me think. So Congress, the government, everybody, blah, 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 blah. Corporations evil. Well, we take all the money. Hey, let's give some semiconductor corporations billions of dollars to build factories all over the country. But corporations are evil. We don't want them. We don't want corporations. I mean, they're greedy. They keep all the money. We don't want them around, but we're going to give them billions of dollars of free money to, to expand. We're going bipolar government we have anyway tsm a lot of trouble getting through this area we may retrace to the roadmap line that support resistance 170 above i'm talking about all the semiconductor factories they're putting out billions of dollars to build a, a lab master labs don't have enough bars to do anything google tagged the target on friday that sets us up with the, the four paths either we're going to drift on higher go sideways and pop Retrace back to the 100 and pop. And I have it, you know, I have it drawn out a little. This is not time estimates. This is just demonstration of the potential pathways here. We hit that 161 target. There's no high probability anything left. We'd have to retrace to the roadmap line to set up a new high probability setup for me. DDOG. Churning, churning, burning. And we hit my estimated roadmap line, but not the actual roadmap line. That may be a retrace before you drop again. Be cautious there. 618 can turn down again. Certainly turn down again. Rio. Man, what a choppy mess. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't touch that with your money. <sighs> My goodness. My goodness. If we break, if we were to break back above about 71. Yeah, 71 looks like 79, but I would I would not be touching this right now. Decliners. MSTR still looks like it wants to come back to the roadmap line. Uh, I'd be very cautious. We can hold, we can hold this 1300 area and go again. We could go sideways until the point where the roadmap line got up here. Entirely possible. I'd watch out. I think we're going to retest that zone right in there. Where does that zone come from? It comes from this prior all-time high right up here. I think we're going to back test it a little bit before we go again. CRM. That looks like it's coming on down. M R N S. Oh, this is why I don't mess with pharmaceuticals. Look at that. That's just like, oops. We just lost 75% of the value plus some. DJT, I told you not to mess with this. Look at that. Here she comes. Here she comes. Not far to go now. Who was doubting? I know you were doubting. Who's doubting? Who was doubting me? When I said it was very bearish, who was doubting me? Hopefully nobody got long. It's still long. No when you're wrong. There it goes. There it goes. Rare. Hmm. Nasty. Logi. 
right back to the roadmap line as we pop, saw it pop up on the alert earlier. We can break above that consolidation right back up here. And get above that, heading on up. Otherwise, this may do a retrace. And the next support, probably down somewhere down there. Zoom it out. That low, that high. And then below that is right there. So support zone right there. And then the major support there if we're going to do a deeper retrace. Got to see that hold if we're going higher. Otherwise, we get below this. And we put into play that and the fact that we went down, retraced, held a lower high. And we'd be heading down lower. There's a little bitty gnat keeps flying right, right, like right through by my glasses. Hopefully y'all don't see it. <laughs> it's annoying the crap out of me. Welcome to the live show. This is a biotech pharma untradeable, untradeable for me. TMF. Oh baby, oh baby, I got the target. I think we're going lower low. Next target down. We've got a little bit of support left. We can hold that right there at 43. If we get below that 43 area, right there's the target, 33. Yep. SCHW, Hobbin, Charles Schwab. When did they report earnings? Was it today? Freaking Windows updates. Come on. Yeah, Charles Schwab is today. Yeah, I could have just clicked on it, though. And uh, so 74, 79, possibly this bigger target up here at 90. That looks pretty solid. Yeah, FAS. This is interesting right here. If, if and when we get this retrace, this one has a big picture time frame potential to do this. I'm talking thousand dollar target. Maybe like JT, I don't believe you. Well, that's a 10 Xer. Buy a buy a share and sit on it. I mean, this doesn't really have a history of reverse splitting or splitting period. Now we could split, and we probably I'm I'm sure we will see a split if we get up in a 300 area. Yeah, we split back here before. Four for one. Three for one. Wouldn't take a couple of those and push us right up into here. All right. What was that? TLT just popped up. Sorry, pop and go. Oh, looky, looky. Looky here. Lots of people said that was the lowest we're ever going to see TLT. Guess what? Next support coming up here. We get below that zone right there. I was thinking below that line, but I'm actually going to go right here. If we get below that, we're going lower low. That low can be down here. Let's draw the target. It's not magic. It's just chart patterns. I'm telling you. Not magic. Do you believe in magic? Ooh, baby. Love it. Love it, love it. All right. Moving on. S&P bias for the day. And then we can wrap this baby up. Ooh, BT, BT. Moving strong. Got an alert on my watch. Oh. Probably coming down to $1.83. Maybe down here. SPX. So, bias for the day. Jumping down, jumping down. Right here. We got to get above the 30 minute roadmap line. And 
here's the resistance for the upside. Right up here. All those highs. We gotta get above those. And then we have the odds that we're going on up. Next target up, 5,300, possibly 5,360 above that. Once we get up here. And like I said, that could take us out till May. That could take us through the end of the year, end of the month, end of the year, through the end of the month, not the end of the year, just the end of the month. And ES has a more complete picture because the price action overnight, getting a little, finding a little resistance at that 30 minute. We can get above, back test it from the top. That'd make me feel a lot better. And we've got the downtrend of the highs that we've had cooking since back here in March. Downtrend, 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 downtrend. So we break above that downtrend. We break above that 618 resistance. Sets us up to potentially go right up here. All right. There you go. I don't talk trades in the morning, J JK. No, this is not the correct place to ask me anything about trades. Do not ask me about trades on here. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you in Discord, which is the place to talk to me about anything you want to know about. Make sure you use the correct channel or whatever you're asking about. And I'll be back again tomorrow morning. Same bad time, same bad channel.